All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan City Park Board meeting of Wednesday, October 16th. If you can join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Shannon, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Latchford? Here. Mr. Freeze? Here. Mr. Lang? Here. Ms. Espar? Here. All right, the minutes from our October 2nd, 2019 meeting were given to us in advance. So unless there are any corrections or additions, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. And we'll move on to old business and some project updates. Jeremy, please. Thank you and good evening. Uh, first with our ESG projects, um, the, the work that is going to be conducted on Banworth Field that was uh, approved as a uh, change order via the City Council, um, that work will begin on Monday um, with Marcus Electric um, at the facility. Um, we are still waiting on word back on the other um, fields, needing that same um, work done. Um, and uh, we're still waiting on ESG to submit something to the City Council for consideration. If not, um, just giving the boards a head up, heads up, it is something we're going to have to uh, look into addressing um, and uh, working with the Mayor and the City Council in early 2020 um, prior to our season. <clears throat> um, we are still waiting on the mock-up um, or the uh, rendering, if you will, from the, for the fencing um, at the Senior Center. I requested it again last Tuesday. Um, October 8th at our meeting, um, but still waiting on uh, receiving that. So as soon as I do, I will forward that to the board. And then uh, the, uh, the, the final solar um, project at Patriot Park is completed, other than waiting on NIPSCO to test and sign off on it and their final approval. So um, we're starting to wrap this project up. I think the thing that, that might uh, prolong a little bit um, or possibly into next year would be the additional work on the uh, sports lighting at Patriot Park. Um, with that, the old Lighthouse Museum project, um, we are waiting on approvals uh, still from downstate, uh, but we're still looking at your next meeting of uh, November 6th to have um, all those approvals and um, drawings back in front of you for a final approval. Yeah. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions for uh, the superintendent? All right, we'll move right on to table business. So we'll need a motion to um, untable or discuss the 2020 21 administrative fees, contracts, and policies. I would move we uh, remove the proposed 2021 20, fees and contracts from the table. I would second. If I need the second. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Then uh, have we received any comments from the public in regard to the uh, fees for 2021? I have not received any um, to my office. I know personally I didn't get any. I didn't get anyone any. else. Okay. No. All right. So, um, unless there's a public comment on our 2021 fees, any public comment? Seeing none, there's no other board comment. We have a motion to approve the 2021 administrative fees, contracts, and policies as presented. I so move that we approve the 2020 slash 2021 administrative fees, contracts, and policies. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. All right. And uh, Jeremy, how about the golf fees, contact, uh, contracts, and policies? Any comments? Broken? Yes. Same thing. I uh, have not received any uh, feedback from the public uh, regarding these fees. All right. Thank you. Any comments from the public tonight? Seeing none. Uh, same issue here. Uh, what? In, in case you weren't here for last meeting, what we do, and I should have mentioned this before in our the first vote on the administrative fees and contracts. We discussed these at our last meeting and tabled them in order to give the public an opportunity to give their feedback. And like on the first one, there's no feedback, so we passed them as presented. And that's what we'll be uh, addressing now with the second item with the golf fees. So since there's been no feedback and there are very little changes uh, with what was presented from 2019 to 2020. So unless there are any comments or Proposed changes. Do we have a motion to approve the 2020 golf fees, contracts, and policies? I would so move that we accept the proposal for 2020 fees for the uh, municipal golf course. I would second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> All right. 
We move on to new business, and the first item is the approval of the Big Cat exhibit and preliminary plans. Jeremy? Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, if uh, you wouldn't, if you would be so kind to oblige, uh, I'd like to maybe push this to the end of the meeting as uh, Mr. Scott Cookta from Haas and Associates is supposed to be here this evening, um, and I think it's important for him to um, go through the preliminary plans and, and have, a, uh, I guess, a further discussion with you. So if not, I can do that at, at maybe at the end of the meeting if he doesn't uh, end up showing up, but I'd like to give him the opportunity to uh, to get here this evening. Sounds good to me. Do we Everyone? Need a yeah, we may as well make a motion. May as well. I'd like to move, uh, <clears throat> like the motion that we move. Uh, under new business item A to the end of new business agenda. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. All right, so the next item is the 2019 annual beach management report. Jeremy? Yes, and uh, this is in front of you this evening. Uh, we do submit this annually uh, to IDEM. Um, it goes along with the, the grant dollars that are received to continue to do beach testing uh, or water, water quality testing, I should say. Um, in Washington Park along our lakefront. Um, it's really good information. Um, we use it as a, as a tool. Um, obviously, we're hoping one day to be able to um, get to some type of a more of a predictive model, uh, more real-time testing, things of that nature, but I think we're, we're uh, still years away from that. Um, but it, it is good. It's, it's good to compare. Um, it goes back to the last three years. Uh, shows you kind of our different counts um, regarding E. coli and bacteria at the, at the different stops. We do it in Washington Park. Um, we do it at stop two, and we also do it at stop seven. Um, so it's very good information from us, and I feel over the years we've done a, with uh, some of our past practice, different ordinances that have been implemented uh, throughout the city, um, and specifically within our, our parks, um, has really gone to um, clean up our waters. Um, and our Monday morning beach cleanups, I mean, have really gone a long way. Um, continued um, work by our maintenance department with uh, our beach sanitizer, um, and, and just making the public more aware has really gone to the, um, I guess, the, the cleanliness of, of uh, what we all come to enjoy in our, in our most beautiful asset here in Michigan City. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions um, the park board may have. Um, I do want to thank Shannon uh, for taking the time to uh, put all this information together um, uh, to have it ready for the board. So thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions or comments? Uh, Jeremy, how are the... <coughs> uh, Signs, location signs, the ones we have with the 1 through 13, are they still, good? I don't get down to the beach swimming anymore. Yeah, so on the on the beach side, um, they're fine. Every once in a while we'll have a flag come up missing. Um, we replace the flag. Um, but overall, it's, it's been very successful. Um, down um, the beach, certain areas, like around stop 2 and a little further down, we have some really uh, what I'll call pinch point areas um, where because the lake levels are so high, um, we've actually had to... Um, uh, take one of our, I think, was it 13? I think it was our end one. 13. Or 11, I'm sorry. Stop 11. We actually um, undesignated that, if you will, uh, for lack of a better term, um, as a um, vehicle path, an emergency path, because we cannot get um, emergency um, vehicles, UTVs, things of that nature, from the main beach in Washington Park down to that area. So if we were going to have to do any type of a beach rescue, we'd have to access it from a different um, uh, pathway. So uh, from that standpoint, all of all of Batira question, everything that's on the beach side and even on Lakeshore Drive side is all still accessible um, and we have all those uh, properly identified. And they and they stay that way throughout the winter as well. Thank you. Uh, so we don't we don't remove those in the um, off season. Any other questions or comments? I, I don't have any any question but uh, looking at this I think it's it's really fantastic that none of the beach areas uh, this whole summer were closed, and obviously the result of the the uh, practices as far as keeping that beach clean. And I don't know the name of the gentleman who you who runs that cleaner, but in our walks most mornings he's he's out there. He waves to us. He's just a very gracious individual, and he does a super job. Yeah, that would I'd appreciate it if you would. Uh, Jeremy, while reading through this report, it just uh, it made me proud to be part of the Park Department. Um, just through the history of what's been done with the beach management practices, but even beyond that, going into lifeguard operations, um, the, beef, uh, the beach path, erosion control, public access, it's, there's, it, it just shows a dedication to keeping this resource as vital as important to the community, keep it going, and uh, how we uh, take that responsibility very seriously. 
So this is a great report and, uh, beyond just the water control measures. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic uh, document of our actions and the results of those actions. Any comments from the public tonight? The, the only thing I will add is upon approval, again, I mentioned that we do submit this um, report, but we will also make this available um, in our office and on our website as well for the public to, to uh, you know, look at and read through some of, some of the things that you've mentioned and I've mentioned this evening. Because I believe it is, uh, does showcase not just the Michigan City Park Department, but again, our greatest resource. So, thanks. You're welcome. Do we, uh, Mr. President, do we need to have this available for a week or can we go ahead and vote on it tonight? Or two weeks for the public. Yeah, I don't remember. What have, have we? Done? I would say it's data, so nothing can really change in okay. it. Okay, I didn't think we, we could did. take public comment, but I can't change the data. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. With that, do we have um, a motion to approve the 2019 annual beach management report? I so move that we approve the 2019 annual beach management report. I would second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. All right, next up is the 2020 zoo fees, contracts, and policies. Jeremy? Yeah, and I, uh, just because she loves it so much, um, <laughs> um, have Jamie Huss here, our zoo director, our wonderful zoo director, um, to publicly speak in front of the park board and the general public um, and present uh, the 2020 fees um, for the Washington Park Zoo. Welcome. Hi. I just want to uh, uh, put the fees in the forums. Um, in front of you for your vote. Um, we had a few new programs. Uh, the top program we started two years ago. Uh, we had over 25 participants, so we want to continue that next year. And then uh, we did um, 20 different camps this year with um, school age kids. Uh, we added a few more weeks to that this year and changed the dates, I mean the ages, to make it more family friendly um, for siblings. So um, if you have any questions, I can do my best answer. Thank you. Any questions for Jamie? I have no questions, but looking through this, uh, you guys are so busy. It's just unbelievable all the things that you have got planned for the coming year, and I commend you on that. It's outstanding. You have a wonderful zoo, and you and your staff are doing a super job. Thank you. Any other questions? Or Jamie, comments? just uh, for the public's knowledge, there are um, a couple um, regarding the, um, the fees um, that are stricken. Um, out from what we offered in 19. Um, if you can maybe run through the nonprofit organizations and the zookeeper for a day programs and why we are no longer, um, I guess, uh, proposing to offer those in 2020. Uh, we've been doing more with the internships um, with the Promise Scholarship students. Um, so we're not getting as many um, people participating in the shadow program. Um, also, with some of the safety issues, um, people under 16 are kind of a over us. So we decided to take that program out and focus more on um, college age students and high school students who um, know what they're getting into for the work day. Uh, we, just, we did 41 programs last year and just with staffing, time, we just had to pick programs that we can do safely and that we are most popular. So we decided to take that one out. As for the, uh, the fees on that one level for nonprofit, mm -hmm. most it's the same price, same uh, amount of people for the schools and there are more people take that option. So we're just trying to simplify that form because it's like, seven pages long. Um, so we still have the option, the same um, people can apply for either one, but the school program, it's the same thing. So we just, it's just redundant to have both on one form. Okay, thank you. And there's just one other change I noticed on the outreach program registration request. It looks like it used to go through November and now just through October. Uh, same thing, weather. Uh, the USDA has in instructed more laws on taking animals out. So it's like 62 to 82 degrees. And with the weather changing so much, it has the animals have to come first or something. Okay, thank you. Any other changes other than those that we've just discussed? Yeah, basically we want to cancel programs by changing the, the, the weather, um, the, the months. To see if it's canceling. Sounds good. Thank you. Jamie, yep. wait, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, when you say, with the um, zookeeper for a day program and more of the, I guess, participants coming from the high school or colleges, would that have been kind of covered by the outreach program, the career talks? I mean, it may not be as hands-on, but... Yeah, we do that with that, and we still do, um, we have an open policy, I mean, as a project, we did some students with the 
how to do a workshop book for a while. We still do that one-on-one -on -one with the groups, um, but it's individually done. Questions online are still, but we don't want to charge a fee for things that you don't need to do. We have a volunteer program too, so, um, but just doing it just one day a month or a year when they have 10 kids, it was just too hard to do. So we'd rather do projects per, um, per request than just to have a fee and have to uh, try to schedule it in um, on the off season. That makes sense. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there any uh, reason why we would consider not tabling this and giving public input until next meeting? Okay. Any questions from the public at this point? All right. If there are no other questions or comments, do we have a motion to table the 2020 zoo hours, fees, and programs and contracts until our next meeting? I would so move that we table this until our um, next meeting of the Park Board. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Our next item is the approval to apply for the Indiana Office of Tourism Development Grant. Um, yes, I'll take this one. I serve as the treasurer on the Michigan City Public Art Committee, and the committee is interested in getting a very large, expensive gateway piece. There is a um, grant opportunity that's due on December 6th of this year. So what we're looking at, I did give you a summary of the project, but it's been updated since then. What we're looking at is a total cost of $100,000. The grant is a 50-50 match. Um, we've had some interest from the Convention and Visitors Bureau for match funding as well as Redevelopment Corporation. Um, the problem with the grant itself is the committee is not a legal entity. So what I'm proposing, um, and this has been run through the city attorney's office and they're fine with it, the park department would apply for the grant, manage the grant. Once we get the funding and the sculpture is installed, it would become the property of the city as part of the public art collection and it would be insured by the city. Um, so what I'm asking for tonight is permission for the Park Department to apply. Thank you, Shannon. Any questions or comments? I was wondering exactly why, when, when I received this in the mail, about we were involved in this since it was an art thing, but I thank you for the explanation and I think it's a great idea to move forward. So just for clarification, the art committee is made up of 11 members and by ordinance, the park department has to serve on that committee. So we are partner um, by ordinance. So it's, it's in our interest to do this. Absolutely. Oh yeah, thank you. I agree. Thanks for mentioning that. Any other questions or comments? Shannon, we can uh, go ahead and apply for this grant without the 50% being committed by any we, of those entities that you mentioned? We cannot. Um, so the first thing we needed was park board approval to apply. We're working on the application. We will be going to the redevelopment meeting on November 18th, and I already have the letter of commitment from the CBB. Um, in the meantime, we will s uh, seek other local funders. The more partners you have, the better chance you have of obtaining the grant. But this is a tourism grant, um, so having the CBB on board as a partner is really huge. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments from the board? Any questions from the public? All right, hearing none, what is the pleasure of the board? I would make a motion um, that we ap approve submitting for this grant. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. All right. Thank you. You're welcome and good luck. All right, the next item is the renewal of the Patriot Park concession lease. Jeremy, please. Yes, and uh, back in uh, March of 2018, uh, the Park Board entered into a uh, three-year lease um, with Super C concessions um, for um, the operation of the concession uh, stand out at Patriot Park. Um, and this would be, um, it was a three-year lease, but having to come back in front of the Park Board each year for renewal um, were the terms of that contract. And uh, working with Mr. Valdez, um, he's done very well um, in 2018 and 2019 from a standpoint of being open when we've had events or tournaments, um, always being reliable, being easy to work with, um, eager to do more and wanting more games and tournaments, which we're working on. Um, but uh, the weather early this season was not a... Uh, 
uh, was definitely a hindrance in that. But um, anyway, he's done a very uh, outstanding job for us. I've not heard anything uh, negative regarding him or his operation um, and would recommend um, to the board this evening to move forward with the third year of that agreement with Super C Concessions. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions or comments from the board? Those attributes that you mentioned, uh, we don't take lightly. It's uh, for him to be able to, to uh, I guess, to perform under the terms and conditions of the contract is uh, it is very good because we've had difficulty in the past. Sure. Yeah. Something I uh, as a side note on this, something I hear more than anything else is um, never about what happens actually on the field of play. It's about how are your concessions and how are your restrooms. And that's what brings people back uh, to our facility year in and year out to play in tournaments at Patriot Park. They might have um, got the raw end of the deal on a call on the field, lost the game, um, you know, lost an in extra innings. Um, they thought it was an unfair call. But if you run out of toilet paper or your prices are too high on bottled water or you don't have the uh, you know, quality food in your concession stand, something of that nature, um, that's what's going to get the phone calls and that's what's going to prevent um, specifically – um, the moms of those players uh, coming back to your park. So uh, we do take great pride in that and, uh, and something that uh, Super C's concession has done a good job on that front. Fantastic. Great, great to hear. <coughs> Any questions from the public? All right. Based on Jeremy's recommendation, do we have a motion to approve the Patriot Park concession lease? I, I would make that motion that we renew the concession lease for Patriot Park. I would second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Jeremy, seeing that that's the last year, uh, so this time next year will we be putting RFPs out? Yeah, maybe a little bit sooner than this. So we'll just we'll look at timing, but probably around this time. Um, definitely don't want to do it any later just in case we, you know, because we want to, if it's not Super C concession, you know, renewing another uh, lease of three years, it would be a new operation, so we want to give them ample time. Um, and usually we begin games or tournament weekends uh, start in April. Um, so you want to give um, a new vendor or the previous vendor, if they are to regain that uh, or reobtain that license agreement, you know, ample time to get ready and, and um, ahead of the season. So I would say no later than, than November. And just to be clear, there's no option for Super C to just renew it. It that has is, to go out to an RFP. That is correct. We will completely rebid the uh, operation. Great. Thank you. The next item is a renewal of the Millennial Plaza Landscaping Services Agreement. Jeremy? Yes, and absolutely uh, similar uh, situation here. Um, uh, uh, PR's Lawn Care um, has had the uh, maintenance agreement in Millennium Plaza uh, for the past two years, 2018, and then this year in 2019. Um, and for the third year, um, we would, uh, I would recommend approval of that third year of renewal. And they're very easy to work with. They've been attentive. They've come back out um, when we've needed to. They've... Um, also communicated with us, hey, you maybe want to up your irrigation, the amount of irrigation, but now you're getting dry in certain areas. They've notified us if uh, we've had sprinkler heads, you know, that have, might, may have been damaged or vandalized. So, because um, obviously we went from one extreme to the other this year. We went from, we've had so much rain that, you know, we never want to see water again to a month later, everything is, is dried out and um, looks very bad. So uh, Millennium Plaza is something that we take great, great pride in. Obviously, we put some money into the uh, re-landscaping of that area this year, um, and it's something that when you come over that bridge, it, it pops and it really stands out with the old Lighthouse Museum in the background. So something um, I want to keep up, and they, they, they uh, put a great deal of time, effort, and energy, and attention into that park, and I would uh, highly recommend approval for third year. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions or comments? I would only echo Jeremy's comments on how, how nice it looks, um, just being on, even this last weekend. It's, uh, it stands tall. Any questions from the public? All right, seeing no other comments or questions, do we have a motion to approve the renewal of the Millennial Plaza Landscaping Agreement? I would so move that we um, approve the renewal for the third and final year. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, next item is resolution number 901. And what we have here is movement within the zoo fund, and that fund is 2056.504, where we need to uh, decrease zoo food by $20,713 and reallocate that same amount of money to 
water, five thousand, sewage, two thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars, electric, eight thousand dollars, and contractual five thousand thirty eight dollars for a total of twenty thousand seven hundred and thirteen dollars. Uh, any questions or comments? If not, do we have a motion to approve resolution number nine oh one? I so move that we approve resolution number nine oh one. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. All right. The final item on our agenda is the approval of the Big Cat Exhibit preliminary plans that was moved from the first item to last item earlier tonight. Yes, and uh, we have Mr. Uh, Scott Cook uh, from Haas and Associates here this evening. Um, we have... Uh, he has more so than we have. I've uh, been working on this for, for quite some time now. Uh, we just recently met um, with uh, Mr. Kupta and uh, Zoo Director Jamie Huss and I met um, this past week just to kind of finalize um, the preliminary plans. I'm using kind of wrong words there, but um, to get the preliminary plans in front of the park board to be able to begin to move forward. Um, I will say that we are on schedule, and that was what our original uh, project plan um, was to have the preliminary plans in front of you for this meeting, and then depending on what happens this evening, the hope would um, to, to have um, final design approvals, drawing specs, an estimated budget at your December 18th meeting. Um, so again, we still are on, on track unless uh, you come and uh, say something different if, if it might need more time depending on what comes out tonight, but that I believe where we can stay on track with that and uh, just uh, before Mr. Cook to get started, I'd just like to thank him because there's uh, been a lot of time, effort, energy, and uh, research um, that he has put in um, to this point on this project, and I think we are, um, I feel very confident in the direction that we are heading, so Mr. Cook. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, you should have, I believe, your packet, uh, the, the drawings. Um, so, yeah, so these are preliminary schematic plans at this point. Um, the primary purpose of the design to this period was to, to get a sense of the enclosure and the site plan uh, for the new exhibit. Uh, we've not delved yet into significant structural um, solutions or um, even uh, significant cost information at this point. That would be the next step. Uh, in the design process and the design development <clears throat> and into construction documents. So what you're looking at is preliminary uh, plans for schematic design stage. Um, the, the, uh, the first page there is a site plan uh, with uh, north uh, is up on the page and the primary elevation of the, of the new facility looking from the south. That would be from that existing uh, pedestrian pathway, if you're familiar with the zoo, that rises um, in elevation as you move to the east. Uh, you can see the existing habitat area uh, is that kind of uh, very uh, orthogonal black uh, steel uh, and wire cage um, enclosure. So the primary design concept here was to, um, to marry a couple of uh, design solutions um, with that existing structure. Um, one was to play off of the new, um, the, the new confining um, um, uh, alignment of that pedestrian pathway, which, actually, which is actually slightly at an angle to the existing structure. Uh, so we've we've oriented orthogonally um, the new beam structures to to that new pathway. So there's a slight angle, and that creates a little bit of tension with that existing structure. Um, and you can see in the uh, various elevations, and particularly on page two, which is uh, more illustrative, is the three dimensional view. Um, it creates a little bit of dialogue, as we say, in design with the existing structure. Um, we're, we're, we're not exactly keen on repeating the uh, existing design, although I believe Haas and Associates uh, through <laughs> DH2W was the uh, original designer back many years ago. Um, but clearly, uh, zoo habitat enclosure is, uh, has really, uh, the design concepts have really, uh, really actually in the last 15 years, um, taken on a uh, much more interesting and um, animal-centric and visitor-centric um, perspective. So um, the idea here is to create a couple of um, uh, basically faux rock features, um, large stone uh, made out of uh, what's known as gunite or some similar material, um, as we discussed way back to the fall, uh, um, which is um, 
commonly seen in zoos. You see that in most zoos with the with the fake rock look. Uh, and you can see it at the zoo in many places, including the um, the carnivore exhibit. Um, so the idea would be to create a couple of um, features on each end, on the on the west end of the exhibit for the tigers and on the east end for the lions. And then in the very center, as an extension of the existing building itself, would be what we're calling the Pride Rock area. And that would be an elevated um, kind of stepping stone rock feature that the animals could climb up onto and present a nice viewing opportunity for the visitors. Um, these rock areas would be um, accented with some large um, viewing pane glass windows uh, to allow the, the uh, visitors to get right up close to the animals, presuming the animals are approaching the glass at that time. So, Again, that's also a very common sort of standard feature in zoo design these days. Um, then the other feature are these large curved wooden beams that provide structure in between those, those features. That would be essentially the sort of cage structure that would span between those two. Um, and uh, that just pro provides a really nice visual um, accent feature to draw your eye up. The elevation of this would be much higher than the existing ceiling height of the existing uh, facility, uh, which is you know, both good for the animals and, and for, for the visitors, too, to, to appreciate. So um, the, uh, the new uh, material would be, uh, uh, likely at this point, would be a, a stainless steel airline cable mesh uh, rather than the very hard and rigid 2 by 2 inch by 4 inch uh, black steel mesh that's on the current facility enclosure. So it would be a much more transparent feature. Um, and that combined with the viewing glass is going to, provide a lot of light and, um, and visual access for, uh, for visitors to the exhibit. So we think between the new added rock features um, and the, the just tons of um, long viewing expanse from that elevated walkway, it's just going to be a really wonderful, wonderful uh, experience for the, for the visitors. Um, and I'd love to take your comments and questions on it, but again, just to repeat these, please uh, a challenge with design is we have to make some design decisions to get it to look realistic so people understand kind of what, what the thing is. It's still a schematic stage at this point. We are able to incorporate some feedback. I um, encourage you not to get caught up in one feature. If you don't like the color of the rock or something, you know, that's just uh, something that can change at this point. And, and um, this will continue to evolve as we get into the um, more structural design of it and the costing information as we, as we get costing information from suppliers based on the various structural members we choose. Thanks for walking us through that, Scott. Yeah, if I could just uh, elaborate a little bit. Um, the Some of the thought process that went in um, to, I guess, the aesthetic look of this um, is right across from this and right across the sidewalk is, you know, the wolf exhibit that stands straight up. And if we had a straight up type of an exhibit, it creates a very, very narrow like walk and view shed, it almost feels like you're in a, you would feel like you were in a tunnel. Um, so some of the, you know, conceptually um, speaking through the schematic design um, that uh, Scott has, has worked on is it leaves it really still kind of open, just if you can picture it, and it doesn't like close and really confine that space uh, from a visitor standpoint. And then I think most importantly, it's, it's going to place the animals, um, the tigers, lions, in a more um, more into their habitat or in, in their environment, giving them more space. Um, because right now, um, you know, they're they're fairly confined, and these are some you know pretty big animals that that we're discussing. So, and I think, and I don't know if you know, Jamie, feel free to step in at any time from a from an animal standpoint, as you're the expert. But um, I just think this is something that that's a win-win, and and I really want to kind of start getting down to some of those details when we start talking. Um, you know, kind of, I guess getting down and more into the weeds a little bit, but uh, from from an uh, initial look at it and working with it, I'm very um, excited about this, um, and I think you know we're all, we're going in the right direction. Is is I guess where I can state at this point from my standpoint. Thank you, Jeremy. Any any other comments or questions? Uh, uh, yeah, just that on the um, Pride Rock. The, what separates the tiger from the lion? Uh, currently, you can see it on the last page um, a little bit on this uh, perspective here, but in the center would be a continuous wall back to the existing facility. Um, so that would that would keep them separate. Um, it's actually a question I have for Jamie. We don't have to do it live, but I am curious if there are other, if glass could be used too, or if that would be problematic. 
cat. That's what I figured. <laughs> but we thought that could be exciting. <laughs> But yeah, that would be a wall there. So the, the basic concept of those walls, and I apologize for repeating myself, but you'd have a concrete block or some sort of concrete wall uh, structure at the center of that, and then they build these kind of faux rocks around that. Um, and so, yeah, again, the, the main concept is to have these kind of rock features, more mass um, uh, that, that would be found in their native habitat, and then open it up in between with the sort of spanning wood open arches so it feels lighter and, as Jeremy described, not so confining. Uh, when you're walking in that because that is when you walk that's the first thing you see when you walk into the zoo is that space and right now it's it's a fairly nice landscape area with some you know plantings and grass and trees and uh, that's going to go away and become this facility so we feel that arch helps soften that feel when you come in that it's not just a big square you know um, hunk of building because um, it can start to feel a little bit closed in all right thank you do the animals do they uh, have access to the new area through the existing cage? I mean, they get in and out of the weather through the, the old ex existing cage? Yeah, so, they, for, so the access from the existing house, uh, building to the outside is not going to change at all exactly as it is. Uh, we are providing uh, two new viewing glasses on the south side of that facility. Uh, so should the um, cats be inside, if they're in that, that southernmost um, kennel in the facility. The viewers would still be able to see them, uh, which was a request from the, from the zoo to, because uh, um, obviously they come to see the cats, and if they're inside, you can't see them. Um, uh, we are hopeful that we can design a beam that's affordable that that allows us to knock out all of the existing uh, steel columns on the south uh, perimeter of the existing facility. Uh, to have a totally seamless look into the new one, we may end up with a column or two in there uh, to make sure we can build this affordably. But and and that is a question that does get asked, I know, quite often to myself, and maybe yeah, Jamie probably properly put it better than I can. But allowing them to always have access to that interior space. This is an open exhibit. We do try to give them free choice because uh, they are confined. So we give the animals lots of enrichment throughout the day to keep them out. Uh, active, but we do give them choice to go inside for air conditioning, privacy time, um, and with that comes usually the peak point of the day when it's warmer or most busy that they're inside. Um, the way the doors are set up, they're all on the south, on the the east and west sides, so you don't get a clear view. So, like Scott said, with the new windows, you'd be able to just peek in that front. We call it a bedroom. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> um, but to the front bedroom where they're at, the cat feels more comfortable, so the cat has. Um, reason not to hide, but with all the, the spaces, the rocks, they have choice of how to be on the elevation they want to be at and just make their lives better and then that makes the, the guests can kind of see the animals are happier, um, which makes our lives better too. So, Great. Thank you for that explanation. So, you, go ahead. I was noticing on this front page and even on the uh, back side of that front page, it looks like there's an expansion to the existing lion habitat area, um, what would be on the far, I believe, east side. Northeast, yeah. Would there be a corresponding one for tiger, or is it just uh, lions we, require more space? Uh, we just have more. There's a service road right where the north arrow is. Uh, there's a service road there uh, to gate... Three, gate three, if you, you can see it from uh, Lakeshore Drive. Um, so we have some space available there. Okay. We just don't have that space available to the west where the stroller corral is and um, and the entry, the okay. whole entry plaza. So it's just, yeah, we're trying to maximize the available space. So we had right. that, so we thought we would expand it out there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Offhand, do you have uh, an idea, and maybe you, you don't have the exact numbers, and it's just an estimate, but I'm just curious as to how many square feet of space there are, there exists in the old area and how much new square footage is going to be with this addition. Um, I, I know the new amount, it's about 3,500 square feet. Um, I apologize, I don't offhand know the... I'll be one. I, I can get you that, That's but yeah. But you could tell, um, I would guess, speculating... Might be about that same amount. Okay. Uh, Scott, is it um, 
did you mention there's going to be mesh on the ceiling or roof and glass along the whole perimeter, the walkway in both ends? Yeah, that's that's the goal, if we can afford it to do it, uh, would be to have continuous viewing glass the whole way. It has to be um, some pretty hefty glass uh, for to, to keep the cats in, which have a pretty significant charging force. Um, uh, the wire mesh is required uh, for the ceiling if it's less than uh, lesser than 15 feet of total height for the wall um, and in addition to that that's somewhat moved the park um, or the zoo would prefer to not um, have it open regardless um, uh, and Jamie I guess you could speak more of this if there's some questions but I think in general her, her concern they have they struggle with trees and debris and things like that coming in um, and then it, it it limits the ability to repurpose the facility down the road should they want to change out the animals to, uh, in the future. So, so the design direction is to fully enclose the uh, top, which is um, it's good to know that opens that shuts down a whole different design direction. So yeah, that's but that does require then the the beams across the top to create a ceiling structure. So it's not just a wall project; it's also a roof project. Thank you. Would that glass be similar to what the grizzly bears have? Yeah, it's a similar product. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Comments? Looks pretty neat. Yeah, Any questions from the public? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, this is um, impressive. Mm -hmm. Right on. To say exactly. the least. Exactly. Sure is, hope we can afford. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, that'll be the next step: is working through the costs. And um, again, part of the idea of the schematic design is throw throw ideas out there <coughs> visually, and things might get scaled back or shifted around. But these main concepts will, will preserve throughout the whole project. Well, thank you for preparing these and for coming tonight and walking us through it. It's an exciting uh, project. We're glad you're involved in it. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve the Big, Tech, Big Cat Exhibit preliminary plans? I so move that we, uh, we do go ahead and, and uh, accept and approve the preliminary plans for the feline house. I would second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Any other business tonight, Shannon, that didn't make the agenda? No, sir. Thank you. We'll move right on to report of officers. Jeremy, superintendent's report, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, at this past uh, Board of Works meeting, um, there was a um, request that was uh, submitted to the park board um, from a resident um, via the Board of Works meeting um, regarding um, lighting at uh, Water Tower Park. Um, I guess there has been some requests from some residents um, to add additional lighting um, within the park, specifically around the basketball courts. Um, I, I don't think we can make a motion to do anything about that at this time because that we're talking funding um, if we were going to go down that road. But it's something I wanted to bring to the attention of the park board this evening for simple fact that it was brought to us from the Board of Works. Um, that is something that we need to um, address in the, in the fashion of uh, looking into doing some more research on it. Um, again, park hours, how does that affect it? How would it affect the residents there? Um, it also is stated um, in here that um, she also, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Vera Foster, also believes that there are some residents um, that do not want to see lighting there. But what is happening um, is some um, neighborhood kids or those coming to utilize the basketball car course after dark are pulling their cars in on the service drive and using their headlights, um, to uh, car headlights, to light the basketball court, which this can then be and some other issues um, in the area of that of that park. So <clears throat> I want to bring it to you for conversation purposes. Um, nothing we can necessarily do this evening because um, other than you know continue to look into it um, and have the conversation, um, but if we wanted to move forward and the park board decide, hey, we want to increase lighting on the basketball courts at uh, Water Tower Park, that's something that we're going to need to look at, you know, a funding source to do so. I will also remind the board that we are um, looking forward with a CDBG grant um, funding for that we're looking at, which we've already approved preliminary designs uh, for Water Tower Park, or at least to move forward with that um, and the uh, renovation of that facility. So maybe that's something we look at in there as a part of that process when we start going and getting community feedback um, things. That would be my probably the best way to go about it would be my thought. Um, so again, if you do have any other thoughts, please let me know. Um, but it's something I at least want to have something 
and maybe um, if the board so chooses, maybe uh, Mr. Lashford, you and I can just uh, come up with some type of a, um, I don't know if you need to be involved, necessarily involved now, but just a response to the board works that it was brought up, we're addressing it, we're looking into it, and we're um, looking at making it a part of our um, process of uh, with the Water Tower Park renovation, something to that effect. So, um, but I don't know if that needs to be in a form of a motion or anything, but something that maybe we can uh, take offline as a part of a uh, response. Well, we can, if, just to avoid any any doubt, we could, if the board choose tonight to include that in part of the, as part of the Water Tower Park CDBG project, we can all agree tonight to make that part of the project. And I would make that motion. It makes sense to incorporate that into an already existing project. Second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Great, thank you. Well, sorry to, that that wasn't like an agenda item, but I wanted to make sure I brought it up since it, I believe they are going to um, formulate a response of some type at their next Board of Works meeting. So I did want to bring that up this evening. Um, continuing to work with the City Forester, um, and I'm still told that by the end of this month, um, all those stumps will be removed. It's still on the schedule uh, with NIPSCO and down in Washington Park along Fetters Alley, or along Lakeshore Drive um, down through Fetters Alley. Um, I am meeting with her next week to discuss the new plantings that I bring up at the last meeting um, and potential other trees uh, throughout the park. So once her and I, uh, she has a list of native trees, um, we're going to go through and start talking about placement at that point in time. Uh, maybe your next meeting, maybe the second meeting in November. I'm hopeful to have something in front of you as a, you know, at least a preliminary plan to begin to move that uh, process forward for the spring. Um, we've begun... Uh, Fall cleanup and winterization in a lot of our parks. Um, all the leaves haven't fallen yet, so my guess is, as usual, they will all fall, and then I'll be followed by a foot of snow. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of how we uh, uh, get treated cold. around here every now and again. But uh, um, uh, staff has been very busy with doing that. We've also included a, um, done some maintenance repairs to some electrical um, uh, panels, things of that nature throughout Washington Park. Just doing some minor maintenance. Um, thing uh, to kind of just wrap up the season uh, we've put a new um, roof on the shelter at Oak Hill Park that was done a few weeks back and a new uh, uh, um, uh, roof on the sweeper shed sorry the sweeper shed in Washington Park when you first come past the entrance so mm -hmm. uh, metal roofs um, and and getting um, those kind of buttoned up because we were getting some leak in, leaks in some some of our roofs and the one at uh, Oak Hill was in pretty bad shape been that way for a while but we were able to Finally, have a little bit of extra money in our maintenance budget that we could uh, purchase it, and we did the work in-house. Um, I want to thank the sanitation department for coming out. Um, <clears throat> multiple times a year, we run into issues at the Rock Garden. It's such a little beautiful area in Washington Park, uh, but the simple fact it does not have any uh, drainage system in it. Um, it's just a concrete bowl, if you will. Um, and we get debris, um, uh, a lot of a lot of trash. But people really keep dumping fish in there, um, things of that nature. Uh, but the, there's a green algae that ends up kind of like a skim over the top. Um, so we have uh, worked with the sanitation uh, department, and they they will come and um, use their vac and, and suck it out, um, and then we're able to clean the the um, pond itself. Um, but anytime it rains. It's going to get filled back up. So this is a project that I know has been on our, you know, it's on our Washington Park Master Plan. It's in our Washington Park Master Plan. It's something that the city has um, looked at going for grant dollars before, uh, but the project amount escalated so high that it, it didn't make sense at the time um, under Mayor Oberly's leadership um, or his administration. And it, but it's something that we do have, have in our, you know, on our project list. Um, and it's something I don't want to see lost because it's such a beautiful area of the park. Um, the issue is it's becoming such of a maintenance um, task or item for us multiple times a year, and it's not just hey come um, you know let's let's you know get this water out of here, pump the water out. It's not just that simple. So just bringing and making sure it stays on on the board's radar that um, if we are to continue to find you know whether it's grant dollars or something big comes up Shannon that the, but as you're researching um, that's a project that I would you know love to see because it's such a beautiful area of the park and, and then including you know rehabbing or renovation of the of the old bandstand the gazebo there just that main campus area of Washington Park which is identified through a Washington Park master plan so it's on plans I'm just anxious to get the plans off the shelf so I uh, just want to keep that um, you know on the fourth in the forefront 
We did have to um, close uh, Lot 1 of Washington Park today um, due to the conditions of the uh, waves. Um, they were crashing um, hard on shore over the pier and just from a public safety standpoint. Um, so we did uh, communicate with the Michigan City Police Department. Um, they came down there to assist us. There were many residents and those visitors uh, today, they weren't happy with us, um, but on the air of, uh, side of caution and public safety, um, we are glad that uh, everyone um, understood at the end of the day and, um, and adhered to those guidelines of closing Lot 1. The rest of the park was open, but again, it was just a safety issue. Uh, something I'm also happy to port, uh, report is, um, as you're aware, the city is um, in a contract right agreement with Recreate Media. They're doing a lot of marketing. Um, thanks for Michigan City. Um, have you know worked with the Park Department on certain things. Well, this past uh, Thursday, um, they uh, we finally were able to to get the course where we wanted it because it was scheduled for the spring. Uh, but they did come out uh, to the Michigan City Golf Course, did aerial uh, drone footage of the golf course and took a lot of photos so that's going to be available for us to use in marketing materials on our website and um, wow you know anyone who um, is, a, is a golfer or is familiar with golf of any, in any kind plays courses around here or, or nationally or wherever uh, for a, a municipal course understanding the budget that we have and I've said this before um, and the staff that we have to maintain what we do tee to green um, again, for a municipal course, I will put Michigan City Golf Course up against anybody uh, from that standpoint. And uh, tell me someone who argues, and, and I would love to sit down and debate that. Um, but uh, I just want to thank the staff um, at the Michigan City Golf Course, Randy Durham and his crew. Uh, they do an absolute phenomenal job. Um, yeah, we can nitpick just like we do everything, um, but you know, dollars are, I guess, that, that uh, reason why we can't do some of those things because they're major projects. Um, but from a day-in and day-out operational standpoint and, and the condition they have that course in from what it was in June, I'm absolutely ecstatic. So, um, again, I want to thank you to them and thank We Create Media for coming out. And we had to work around some schedules, and then we got rain, so we had to push it back, and um, we finally got it done. I'm really happy with the results. So um, I can give you the, the get you guys the, the link. Um, to where you can go and look at those um, and then we'll again you'll start seeing because we'll start pulling them and and put them on our website and things of that nature the last uh, item of business um, I want to bring up to you I'm, I'm optimistic um, I am hopeful um, with this but I did reach out to the Michigan City area schools uh, specifically to uh, assistant superintendent Wendell McCollum um, with the idea and the thought of uh, working with the Michigan City area schools to um, make a part of their curriculum um, lifeguard training courses um, and classes uh, to where you know high school age kids could um, become uh, certified Red Cross lifeguards, cert uh, Red Cross certified CPR, um, first aid. Um, we are seeing over the last couple of years a, a shortage of, of lifeguards in our in our region. Um, I've talked to different uh, communities uh, on the lakefront as well as private pools, to YMCA's, to rec centers. Um, and everyone's searching for lifeguards. Uh, so it's not just here, um, but over uh, this year we were we usually carry a staff of 15. This year we carried a staff of 13, um, with one of them um, not well. I should say one of them was a uh, also a Michigan City firefighter. We had an EMT, and then we had another one who had a, a full time job as well. So worked worked quite a bit, but was on call with another position or another job. So. That put us very short staffed um, on majority of the days. There were some days we were operating with only five lifeguards on the beach. And from a safety standpoint, um, that's not um, ideal. Um, so we're hoping, and I obviously it wouldn't be for any time this school year, be a 2020. Um, but I'm meeting with them next week to throw out the ideas. Uh, so if you have any ideas, thoughts that you would like for me to take to that meeting, I'd, be lo I'd love to hear them. Um, it's just kind of throwing it around. I do have a couple... Um, teachers at the high school that are in support uh, so I'm hoping that we can maybe see it through I don't know it's worth a shot um, because I think if between that get the YMCA involved um, some other members of the community and maybe that we can uh, really uh, bring back that interest of lifeguarding um, and not just uh, you know Washington Park but in Michigan City and, and the region as a whole so it's very important for the safety of those visit our lakefront and our facilities um, to have uh, that proper um, safety measures in place. So, um, like I said, I'm optimistic and I'll report back to the board as I know more information, um, but I'm hopeful that we can come up with something. Um, last item of business would just be the vandalism report. We did have vandalism at Hanson Park under the shelter roof. 
um, and it costs us about $100 for removal. And that does conclude my report this evening. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions or comments for Jeremy? I would just like to commend you for reaching out to the Michigan City Area Schools to try to form and uh, facilitate a partnership, foster, between us and them to train because it gives their students an opportunity for employment sure. as well as it helps us out. And I'm sure the YMCA, they're in the same situation. They would be happy to partner too. Absolutely. All right. If there are no other questions or comments, we'll move on to liaison reports. The Planning Commission, there has or was not a meeting since our last meeting. So we'll move right on to the Port Authority. Uh, I was at the meeting. I did talk to Mr. Ferguson, and he told me that what was on their agenda probably had no effect on us. Okay, thank you. And the Zoo Society, Mr. Lang. Well, this is the last time you're going to hear about Boo at the Zoo because it's occurring this Saturday. And again, just as a reminder, session one, the gates open at 11:30 until 1:30, uh, with trick or treating ending, and the zoo closing at two. Session two is gates opening at 3.30 until 5.30 and trick-or-treat ending and the zoo closing at 6 p.m. So there's going to be a lot of little kids down there enjoying themselves on Saturday and hopefully the weather will be good. And also Five Guys Hamburgers is doing a fundraiser for uh, the Washington Park Zoo and on Tuesday the 22nd uh, they are donating 20% uh, of their sales to the zoo. So. Uh, our hats are off to them. And that's all I have for the report. Thank you, Mr. Lang. And uh, Mr. Pichardo, attorney's report tonight? I don't have anything to report. All right. Thank you. Any director's reports tonight? No, sir. Okay. We'll move right on to Department of Finances. Mr. Lang. Under city claims docket for October the 16th, 2019, municipal $76,837.41 Golf Petty Cash, $379.60 for total claims of $77,217.01. And I so move that we pay this claims docket. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Shannon, do we have a payroll? No. All right. Going on then to a report of uh, gifts and donations, none at this time. Under minor transfers, none at this time. Under zoo endowment, none at this time. Under board of works, none at this time. Credit card charges totaling $583.14 were paid to Robert Brook and Associates, Patriot Park Bleacher Caps, $415.42 to Dunham's Recreation Adult Softballs, uh, scorebooks, $119.80, and also to Dunham's uh, Recreation Adult Softball Scorebooks, amounting to $47.92. Again, this brings a total of credit card charges to $583.14, and I so move that we pay that credit card charge. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that is all. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the public tonight? Seeing none, any comments from the board? I have a couple. Sure. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, traveling around this summer, looking at the different parks, I really um, commend our maintenance department. They, they were excellent. Uh, just uh, with, the, with the numbers we have working, they do an outstanding job. Some of my friends are golfers, and just recently, in the past two weeks, I've heard some nice comments about the course being in, in good shape uh, and uh, how it weathered the rain, and uh, so again, hats off to the crew out there. And Jeremy, you're talking about, uh, get, you're talking to Wendell, or Mr. McCollum, about uh, lifeguards. When the schools combined, when Elson and Rogers became Michigan City High School in 95, 96, 96, 97, uh, there was a program for, uh, uh, through the PE department for volleyball and basketball officials. And the class was designed as such that um, the students that were enrolled, when they finished the class, they had enough knowledge and skill to apply 
and take the test for their license. Uh, and I can speak to that because I designed that course. So it has happened in the past. Uh, but then, like a lot of other things, it was cut because of lack of money. But uh, the possibility is there. And maybe that possibility would be um, partnership with the YMCA because they actually have the instructors. And mm -hmm. That might work out well for all three parties. Any other comments from the board? All right, our next meeting will be Wednesday, November 6th at 5 o'clock, but it, instead of in this room, it'll be down the hallway in the Emergency Operations Center. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to adjourn. So move.